Oh, I love him. He's an idiot. Mind your business, even He's though I asked him. I asked him such for a hater. such a hater. This is what happens. People <laughs> ask and can't handle it. Oh, what a perfect How segue. men are bitches. Hey, guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Codependent Podcast. Today's episode is inflammatory. Mm. You like that word? Are there episodes we have that are not? Yeah, sometimes we do little games and things. But this one here is... It's called Men Are Bitches. (laughs) Well, we did do bitch. Before. This is a remix on that. That one never made it through full production. Oh. Um, yeah. That next. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. What's <laughs> that mouth thing? <laughs> That's next. I guess. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it got next. For a variety of reasons. But yeah. So, uh, <laughs> hate to detail them. But this is the evolution 2.0 basically um this is the first episode we shot without any plants behind us Mm. but we do have this wonderful product fuck perfect i'm healing brought to you by black collective at myshopify.blackcollective.com or something like that it'll be a link yeah (laughs) i thought it did well I was close. I have no idea. It's too much of a mouthful. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I just to be .com. We're in between plants. Don't worry. We'll replenish. And domains. <laughs> <laughs> we're in between a lot of things. Men are bitches. <clears throat> we're going to be trying to explore the thesis that men are equally as emotional as men. How come it looks As so... women? <laughs> Thank you. Men... <laughs> Here I am. You're better half. <laughs> You're better half. <laughs> I hate her. Um, yes. Always there for me. Men are equally as emotional as women. How come it looks different? And what are some of the hidden little key phrases or behaviors that men show to kind of equal the woman's emotion in a different type of expression according to the opinion of us at least she's a mental health professional i'm your everyday jackass and welcome to our podcast i like that <laughs> I'm not, that's a great intro you like that make that a one-liner yeah yeah something like that tony su- tony suggested we should do intro every time because you never know when people are going to drop in oh i love him He's an idiot. Mind your business, even He's though I asked him. He's such a hater. He's such a hater. This is what happens. People ask and can't handle it. Oh, what a perfect How segue. men are bitches. Hey, guys. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that demonstration. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was all made up. That was not a genuine interaction. <laughs> Any woo, I mean who? Any <laughs> like woo better? That's gonna be your new phrase. I meant that you again. You know you should have said yeah. any woo. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that again. Any woo. <laughs> let's start out with the first phrase. That, well, actually, let's start off actually saying um, the idea, at least the premise behind this that I have, is that everybody's emotion levels kind of are the same as human beings. The expression is different, so women are more expressive. And men may suppress more, but I, I believe that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what did it sound like? A burp in my ear. <laughs> As it will to anyone else who listens to it. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to know, was it more impressive to you in the headphones? I'd say yes. In everyday <laughs> life, it has some amplification. Some, oh, I should have went real close to the mic. 
Mm, now you want to go close. <laughs> well, double on Tom's. <laughs> <laughs> This is e either our worst intro or best ever. I'm not sure. And I'm leaving it all in. Our five listeners are watching. We'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> or they won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're at... Any woo. <laughs> <laughs> we're having a good time. We're having a good time. Having a good time, you know, having a good time. I like to tell people we're having a good time, you know. I don't like to ask. A lot of comics come out here and they go, are we having a good time? Not me, I can't risk it, you know what I mean? And we're back. Right as I lose patience. So, women are more expressive, men are equally as emotional, but they suppress it, and these are some of the ways and phrases and observations we found that kind of highlight that thesis. Boom. There's an idea, and I'm going to say it as a saying or a sentence or a sentiment from modern day males. And this is not to be generalized. We're not bashing niggas. If the shoe don't fit, don't wear it, nigga. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's already a bitchy moment for niggas. Is that right there? Generalizations. Generalizations exist. Negroes use them all the time. Women shop. Women this. Women that. The moment you generalize a nigga, they be in their feelings. People hate generalizations. If it don't apply to you, it don't apply to you. <laughs> cool. You the anomaly. <laughs> Keep it moving. Be rejoice. <laughs> It's difficult, though, because I think uh, men, women, blacks, whatever, you would, it's easy to identify with your squad. And then any, any comments or criticisms against your squad are taken a bit personally. Yeah, I have had a couple clients tell me that it concerns them because it's almost like a fear trigger, right? Like the moment women say men are, then they feel put in that category. What they don't realize is, yeah. She's putting you in that category gently. She's gently saying you're yeah. doing that shit. So reflect on how you're doing it. But it's not a demeaning, like demonizing. You're not, it's not the end of the world. You're not a terrible person. Just we all do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do it? Acknowledge it. If not, no. But at least explore do you. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. It does show how the psyche on its initial experience with a potentially judgmental thought is... Not me. Instant. I don't. Nope. This is how I don't. And this, Never. It, but it makes sense, though, because the reputation almost, or reputation of the psyche or the ego or whatever, the flesh, whatever you want to call it, acts to preserve itself. Absolutely. It's the same thing that animals have. Ours is just more evolved to the point that criticisms about our social group can make us self-preserve just like in physical danger. Absolutely. Fantastic. The ride we ride. Man. I'm so sick of being human. Shout out John B. Nah, that's not fair. There's a guy named that. John Bellion. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, don't put them together. It's not bad. It's different. Nah, not bad. Not bad. Just very different. Two legends, if you ask me. Very different. I don't know, because John B. got like two songs. I mean, that's what we, we weren't really, we weren't taking it. Somebody might say that about Bellion. I feel the Bellion has 25 songs, right? Whereas other people know all the time, la, 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 and then they think he has two songs. So maybe that's how we are John B., like, you see what I'm saying? Two legends, though. There is a sentiment uh, men say I've heard that modern women want too much. Mm-hmm. Modern women want too much. Their demands are too high. They are deluded. They think they deserve more than they do. They don't have the respect of previous generations. They think just because they make 40000 they can get a, somebody who makes millions. You know, they want too much in this day and age. Woo! And it's a powerful wave. We've had several famous people speak onto it and feed into it. 
Um, but it's also, it's a shared sentiment um, amongst, the, I would assume based on the followership, a large amount of males and, and, and women too, you know, people, a, lot, a large amount of people representing a certain male emotion. What, they, maybe they wouldn't say emotion though. And that's kind of my point. That's why I want to point it out. I feel it's a highly emotional it's fear based reaction so definitely highly emotional right what fear do you see <clears throat> to me the basis level is she wants something I can't give her mm. so therefore maybe I'll never find a partner mm. fear of loneliness yeah women women today have changed true men today have changed mm. but men today change and don't scare me because I ain't trying to get with a nigga mm. at least the one saying that right mm. so why does a woman changing scare you because maybe I can't keep up. Maybe they want something I don't got. Maybe they want something I'm not willing to give. We know a lot of dudes that are just like, maybe marriage ain't for me. Mm -hmm. For the same reason. But I'm sure there's a lot of women that would say, men have always wanted too much. Mm. So times have shifted, absolutely. Women want more than they used to want, absolutely. Is that bad? For men, it is. In their minds, there's a loss, yes. There's new things that women want. It's a new want. challenge. It's new challenges. It's a challenge new that our grandfathers wouldn't have faced. Absolutely. But is it a bad thing? And that it <clears throat> I, I would and I would that's a great point and I'd liken it to what a white mm -hmm. what white people are saying. Our grandfathers wouldn't have had to face this diversity. It'd have been all us around, all us in charge. That's true. Right, that's real, and that's to fight through racism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that way, losing jobs. Hey, real competition. 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 Anytime yeah. we go from monopolies to Industrial competing market, absolutely. That monopolizing company has to adjust. Blockbuster <laughs> went out of business. <laughs> So, yeah, absolutely. Like you said, businesses, companies have to constantly adjust. So do people. Yeah. Right? That's what evolution means. Yeah. We're constantly evolving. Society today is not like society yesterday. Yeah. The environment today is not like the environment yesterday. Life today is not like life yesterday. Mm. And if you evolve, you survive. And if you don't, you die, literally and metaphorically. So they're scared of death at the end of it. The root cause is, will I survive? Will I be able to pass my name on, my generation on? Will mm. I be able to continue? Will I be able to preserve my life, but also my values? Mm. Maybe not. Right. I like that. Okay. Smash. I don't even have anything to add from an emotional standpoint. You nailed it, which is real. By the way, each one of these things that we're pointing out, at least in my belief, it's valid. That's what that's the first thing I want to say. It's not like, oh, you're ridiculous for this. That's why you're emotional. That's the frame and the lens that emotion has been viewed by is a invalidating, unmerited experience. I'm saying no, very valid, very powerful. It's just proof that you share emotions with the opposite sex. Not you, we. Um and I feel like the acknowledgement there uh, is self-developing. But who gives a fuck? I just want to talk about it. I don't care what what the, what the reason was. <laughs> anyway. Small rant. The, se <laughs> the, second, the second phrase is... I, I don't want nobody around me who switched up. I prefer the day ones, right? So don't switch up, be as you have been, keep people around me who's always been around me, right? And it's seen as a judicious <clears throat> uh, social strategy, which again, no judgment. I'm just saying, I see personally the emotion in it as a fear of people to change allegiance, change emotional investment. If you used to really pour into me socially, if we used to talk a lot, if you used to listen when I talk to you, don't all of a sudden say things that hurt me or support people who aren't supporting me or reduce the amount that you 
are available to me because Absolutely. all those things hurt. Yeah. So don't start with the love and then don't switch it. That cause pain. <laughs> right. Don't take away that and source. And also, don't. just want a want is a desire. So there's a there's a heart, there's an emotion. Which one are you pointing out? Just like even what you said. First of all, like I don't switch up. Like I don't, I don't want people around me to that switch up, right? Yeah. But that lets you know I want people around me. Right? Yeah. So I want connection. That's right. An emotion. Right. That's a desire. Right. To point out what you don't want around you. I keep my circle small, no new friends. To point out the amount and put that energy into who you want to stay away almost shows inevitably an opposite force of desire for certain people to be around. Yeah, which is what they kind of say about atheists, that if you're so sure there's no God, there's no God, there's no God, there's no God, you're kind of proving that there. you think a lot about it. You know what I'm saying? Like. You, you kind of give more credence There's to it, thought to it. Yeah, absolutely. which is why the agnostics try to hit this point of, oh, I don't care about it at all. To, but again, like I don't know or don't know, which is true, right? Like it's not a it's not a sure thing, but it's funny because neither is supposed to be faith. Mm. Certainty is the opposite of faith. If I know I don't need faith, I'm sure I'm certain. But you can't be certain of so many things. And that's what str people struggle with that because yeah. they want to know so much. How can I know? We're constantly learning, which is why evolution exists as well. The things we thought we knew in the 1800s, we laugh at today. Yeah. Yep. Knowledge evolves. Understanding evolves. I also think it ties into abandonment. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I don't know. Depend, <clears throat> depending, on, depending on the man's childhood, their development how their relationships were with their, you know, the people in their life early. A lot of, a lot of people do experience that fear of abandonment that basically if I feel like I have you and you're safe, you leaving feels like other safe people that I, you know, felt yeah. leaving from before, like re digs it up, I would assume, right? Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm saying, so. That. <sighs> and that exists a lot because there's a lot of uh, absentee parents. Yeah. There's a lot of people being raised by grandparents. There's a lot of uh, parents uh, that are in the household but not present or not loving. Yeah. So then we look for love in our friendships and in our romantic relationships and in our other connections. But that's why I said that's a desire. You want connection. You want to reach people and interact with people. But there's also a fear. I don't want certain people around because that's going to hurt. Yeah. Those are all emotional which, responses. Which, and again, it's not wrong, right? Because it's self-protection. But I'm still saying you're a bitch for it. <laughs> Absolutely. In the sense that, like, only because that terminology even comes from a masculine perspective, exactly. right? To show emotion is bitchy. Exactly. Well, then we're all bitches. Because we all have emotions unless we're dead. Exactly. That's what I was saying. I felt uncomfortable when I said it, to be it's honest. It's all right. Well. Like, <laughs> 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 made you feel better. <laughs> Don't do it. What was in power for so long was the male perspective. Right. So from the male perspective, oh, these things are scary. They may not be bad, but why would I want to explore them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what, what's the benefit? There's no incentive yeah, at first, the incentive, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is how society evolves because now you have to explore it. That's the incentive. If you want to get with a woman, if you want to have a relationship, if you want to have a healthy relationship, these are dynamics you now kind of have to explore, which is why That's men wonderful. are frustrated. That's so fantastic because we're a natural social species. Right. I think it's part of forcing society to evolve and, and grow and develop, right? Like, think about the fact that no one asked the animal, did they like that we paved through their forest? <laughs> did they like that we built our houses here? Right. We weren't even around first. Here we are coming through, destroying their land, destroying... The, no one asked them, but guess what? You either evolve or you die. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. To be honest, that's one of the most difficult things when I have clients, they don't like it. Okay, so what now? Life has not changed because you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Life hasn't changed if you like it. Right. It's still there. You either evolve or you don't. That's the only option. You could just keep doing it and complaining about it too. You're still moving, you're evolving, so what's the point of complaining about it? <laughs> As you deal with it, you are. No choice. And I do think, honestly, though, to that extent, 
if I'm being honest, this is where I'm different than me, most people because people feel like, oh, so-and-so's being negative. No, they're not. They're talking about life and life is negative right now. So I don't really like the idea of complaining and people are being negative. What that really to me means is you don't like that they're in a tough space because that makes you feel bad. Right. So you feel like they're being negative. Life right. sucks. And like you said, venting is a part of life. Which leads me to my next phrase. I ain't trying to hear all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very common sentiment at least maybe not in the same diction or verbiage but the idea that women talk too much particularly around emotional topics either talk too much or talk about things they don't want to talk about right it don't even have to be a lot just that's not what i want to talk about and to me that's seen as that's how men are right blah 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 but i'm saying the emotion underneath that is is showing that this conversation is t is too challenging. It's difficult for me. It's overwhelming me. And it's there's, sometimes me it'll go, oh no, I don't care about it. Well, right. What I'm saying is, the reason you're refusing to sit in that seat of the other person and try to care about it, no, I don't. No, shut down. Is because there's a door in you that's emotionally <clears throat> overwhelmed and won't allow you to entertain other thoughts, ideas, or emotions. And that's a highly emotional state. The rejection of a conversation. Also, the expectation is emotional, right? Right? Like to say, I ain't trying to hear all of that, right? That's a strong emotion to, about how this should go, right? Mm. I want this to go a certain way. That's another desire, right? Mm. I think we should talk about it a certain way. That's your thought and your opinion and your desire. But you have to remember there's another person on the other side. What is their desire? What is their thought? What is their opinion? There's two people in a conversation. So you're expressing an emotion, a desire. I want to talk about this. But that person don't have to. You also just express, I ain't trying to hear all that. So you don't have to talk about it either. Right. But then conversation doesn't have to occur then. Because in order for conversation and dialogue to occur, we both have to agree on this conversation. That goes back to the first thing again. Women have changed. They want too much. Yeah, because before they didn't have rights. So whatever the man wants to talk about, you talk about it. Whatever he wants to do, you do it. So now that's not the case anymore. We're not slaves. Mm. So now we're not forced to have conversations we don't want to have or engage in ways we don't want to engage in. So now we do have options. You don't have to listen. You also don't have to connect to women, though. But if you want to connect with them, don't you think you should do it? Like, the thing that kills me is the thing that men resist in their women, they do for their children. Freely. Mm. Freely. Do you listen to your children? Do you talk about things they want to talk about? Do you like all the things they talk about or all the things they're interested in? No. But you recognize in order to connect with them, I got to do some of the things they want to do. I got to engage in some conversations that they want to have. I got to talk about their interests, their likes. All of us as parents do that on some level. Ask them about their school, ask them about their assignments, ask them about their interests, the music, their hobbies, whatever. Do it even with them. That builds a connection. What makes us think that we're gonna be connected to people and we haven't done none of that? Uh, right. <laughs> or it's one-sided. Cause you and I have talked about that where I have poured into people and they feel connected. So they don't understand why I don't feel connected. You didn't pour into me. You haven't listened to me. You haven't heard me. You haven't understood. So that's a one-sided connection. So that's not going to always flow the way you want, right? And so that's also a part of that equation. Are you looking at all of those dynamics? You're saying, this is something I want, which is an emotional response. But you're forgetting, what do they want? That's also emotional. So that's what they're saying. Oh, they're too emotional because they express the desire. You express the desire. Right. Is it too emotional? Is it emotional in a way you're not liking? Emotional in a way you don't appreciate or you don't feel comfortable understand. with or understand? Right. Agree. Even to that point, you said I ain't trying to hear all that. It's emotional in the sense that you're saying I'm overwhelmed, let's stop, right? But you also said at some point I wanted to start this. So now how do you decide I want to stop? Hmm? That's overwhelming. Yeah. That means that's an expression for you. But yeah. what if that person said, I want to stop now? Do you just stop? Yeah, in other areas. Uh, in the yeah. conversations, yeah. in whatever area. Yeah, absolutely. Like, instant. Because isn't that what men complain about sexually? 
or even this whole thing with Lori. She's saying, I want to stop. Oh my God, it's all of these responses. Why? Aren't you saying the same thing? I have changed my mind. I have realized this isn't for me. Whatever it is, I decided, nope, this isn't for me. Right. I want to stop. Why is it wrong for a woman and right for a man? Why can you say, I ain't trying to hear all that, but she can't? You're seeing things from different points of view, from different perspectives. Men hate emotions because that's what they've been taught. Mm. They've been taught that men are not emotional. They've been taught that men can't express. They've been taught that men don't cry. And now they know that's ridiculous. And now they teach their kids it's okay to cry and they still don't know how to express emotion. Right. So now you as a woman are doing things that's challenging that part of them. Tell me to express emotion. You make you want me to not be a man. <laughs> Erase, you want me to erase, the erase program. all of my programming that tells me that this is what a man is. So you want me to be a bitch. So that makes me think you're a bitch. Because you're trying to pump me. Right. And that's going to make me resist. <sighs> and they're not trying to punk you. They're trying to... Men always say they don't have safe spaces. You don't allow yourself to have safe spaces. Women don't have safe spaces. No safe space exists. You force that shit. You do that shit. You just say it. So that's why men are women too emotional, too expressive, too this, too that. Because they're doing the shit anyways because they've already realized where's the safe space. Mm. It don't exist. Either I say it and I don't care. Like even sometimes for me, people that want to protect me, they're like, you shouldn't say that on social media. Why? Because people are in your business. Okay. Because the, the, okay. It it could cause me hurt. It could cause me pain. I'm going to have hurt and pain in life. I've accepted that fact. I know that. And I posted that with that understanding. Some people are going to say things. Some people are going to like it. Some people are going to hate it. I'm even going to have an emotional reaction to both of those things. Yeah. I'm posting knowing that. Yeah. I've accepted that. With awareness. I'm willing to do that and go through that work, go through that process. Because for me, it's worth it. Not everybody's going to say that. Not everybody's going to feel that. So don't post it. The next sentiment I got is simple yet powerful thing of don't disrespect me. The respect, the demanded respect. They say the women want love, but the men want respect. There's a separation of this concept of respect and disrespect that somehow exists in a space where it can ignite me to murder you, but it is, it is non-emotional. <laughs> what are we doing you know what i'm saying it's mm. it is not separate from the pool it's it's another oh, word I think that's for a good point right like when we talk about generalizations it doesn't necessarily mean that the other group doesn't want it but we're talking about more so extremes i guess and when we tend to think of the extremes men talk about respect as the reason they snap and you hear tend to hear that women snapped from love but i honestly think it's a lack of respect too they go to hand to hand it's just like you said the stigmas and the labels we put on things right if i as a woman yell at you because i felt disrespected it's automatically emotional right but it's the same response but you as a man may not scream or yell or cry you might be like you fucking disrespecting me so you may cuss you may get more aggressive what's the difference right, right? The woman gets upset when the man cheats. We say that that's love. That's not about love. That's about respect. What do you think the emotion is for a man underneath disrespect? Hurt. Fear. Uh, I hate the respect thing because I feel like a lot of times when people are saying respect, they want obedience. So basically, if an you... an expectation that you're supposed to respond to me a certain way, right? It's stupid because from not just the masculine perspective, even though I think men and women can exhibit masculine traits, right? But like from the most of society, if someone threatens you, you defend yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So like you said, respect is not a physical threat, but it's a threat to my persona, a threat to my image, a threat to my ideas, my beliefs, my values. I can right? see they say disrespect like I'm in public at a restaurant and you or I'm in public. If I stare at you, right? That could be disrespect. That could be disrespect. Or insulting me or my Calling wife. Your name. But that's what I'm saying. What did I actually do to you? Right. As far as safety. Yeah. Well, how did I hurt you? Physically. Well, I guess people would say that disrespect and loss of reputation can cause loss of safety. 
uh, job, finances. So if I called you a bitch. In front of certain. I cost you your job? In front of my boys. Damn it. I hit the whole damn mic and everything and missed the fly. That shit pissing me a fucking flying in my face. <laughs> you probably should zoom in on that face I made because I. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> speaking to the. Speaking to that psyche, mm -hmm. um, to allow someone to disrespect you and not respond uh, could cost you, like they may return with more, they may go further next time. So you're saying it's built on that hood principle, if I let this offense go, it can get worse, you're going to keep picking on me, you're going to keep bullying me. But if we're being honest, most people that you talk to that grew up in the hood, did they stop picking on you because you stood up to them? Yes, maybe not. I don't know. Exactly. So it could go either way. You just developed a belief, but is it rooted in truth? Mm. Right? Because I've talked to clients about this so many times. When I worked in addiction, especially because it's a male-dominated society, they're arguing me. I'm this tiny-ass little bitch telling them, walk away. They think I'm fucking nuts. And they know I'm from the suburbs. Oh, okay, of course you're going to say that. You think I'm saying it for no reason? I have a temper. I'm not saying it's easy to walk away, but in the end, so that person called you a bitch. What did you do? You punched them. Where did you end up? Jail. Where did they end up? Free. What changed? They still think you a bitch. <laughs> what did you gain? I mean, I think there are, there's really some people who say like they couldn't live with themselves if they allow. And maybe it comes from past abuse where they, where they didn't stand up for themselves. And so now, even if it costs jail... I'm not going to be a victim or I'm That's not, gonna... not emotional. Nothing yeah. happened right now. Nothing happened right now. Nothing physically attacked me right now, but I'm willing to risk it all. <laughs> all. I'm willing to risk jail rape. <laughs> jail rape. Cause you call me a name. <laughs> and then they tell him, no, cause ain't nobody going to rape me in jail. Then they just called you a bitch. You said nobody's going to call you a bitch. He called you a bitch. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. We, we've built our lives on lies. Oh, no. I remember, I don't know who it was we were just talking to, and I said, somebody's going to slap. They ain't going to slap me. <laughs> For what? You end up slap. That's a fake we thought. You slapped as a motherfucker. Slap the shit out of you. All you're saying is, I'm going to either slap them back, I'm going to defend. They still tried. They still yeah. slapped you. They still did whatever. But these are the lies we tell ourselves, and you don't think that that's emotional? Right. You don't think that that's an emotional response? To think mm. that you can even control society, women, yourself, others, it's emotional. It's That's a stance not. being made to protect against the inevitability of the unknown, I think. That's why I like J. Cole, because he talks about it. A lot of times, we call it uh, pontificating, right? Putting on airs, perpetrating, whatever you want to call it. You want to project an image. So yeah, because you grew up in a fearful environment, that's PTSD. So now you want to seem like you're in control. So I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. It doesn't mean you're not scared, but you can say it all day, every day. Yeah. But it pumps you up. Yeah. We see it in boxing, sports all the time. Right? Hype myself up helps me to go into the thing. You still got knocked on your ass. <laughs> you still got tackled. You still fumbled. You still did whatever. But it made you strong enough to go into the game. Yeah. The problem with that is... There has to be acknowledgement or understanding on some level. That's for the game. Once the game is done, I turn it off. It's hard. Hopefully. Yeah. Exactly. Which is why you get some players that get in trouble off the field. Yeah. You get in, you have a lot of players that don't know how to turn it off. Boxers, right? Mike Tyson, we love him to pieces. He bit somebody. Why? You want me to automatically shut off this aggression? You just turn me to turn it on. Yeah. You want me to turn it off at a flip of a switch? That's not realistic. Right. But we like to create these myths because it makes us feel comfortable. We don't want to live in a world where people can snap. The thing about it is we don't even know how to identify emotions. As soon as I talk to clients and we talk about, okay, how did you feel? Well, I think she said, that's a thought. Well, we're comfortable rationalizing. We're yeah, comfortable you've hit with me, thought. You've hit me with this like three to five times during our more charged discussions. And it is a frustrating thing. But like, I'm glad you did it. And you're like, well, how'd you feel about this? Or how are you feeling right now? And I'm like, well, they went pretty smooth. It's like, no, that's a... Okay, well, I'm feeling like... That's an observation. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Okay, no. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's an action. And, then, and it's like, okay, hold on. I'm... 
happy actually sad, a little annoyed. bit frustrated right now based on this conversation co conversation <laughs> oh and then you're like okay, that's go. great we're getting there yes right. but it's true and it's i see it all the time it's so crazy like even just what you said so when they finally say an emotion i've had people like i say an emotion they tell me no this Okay, yeah. tell me the difference. Yeah. It's synonymous. Ang you're angry? No, I'm not angry. I'm mad, though. <laughs> I'm not angry. I'm frustrated. Okay. Yeah. But the frustration is anger, basically. It's fine. The point is something like that. Not even something like that, right? Why? That's what people hate about me. Why did you say frustrated? Why did you say agitated? Why did you say this but mm, not this? Mm. Why did this word resonate with you but this one didn't resonate mm, with you, right? Mm. Sometimes it's because of the intensity. That's fair, right? Like, no, I'm not. I'm not okay. I'm irritated. Like, you need to know how intense is this emotion. If I'm just slightly annoyed or am I agitated? I need to know that intensity. But sometimes it's, like you said, awareness. Sometimes it's feminine, masculine. I don't like to identify as jealous. I don't like to right. identify as lonely. Those are not masculine traits, therefore I'm not. Hold up. Are you though? Right. Are you though? Because I have masculine and feminine traits. You have masculine and feminine traits. Both. So a lot of it is just I don't want to acknowledge that that's how I feel. Right, right, I don't right. want to admit. I don't want to express that and that's, that's how the I feel. And that's the vulnerability of being labeled as these things as a reduction of value in, the, in uh, some male psyches. In some male psyches. In all of them, actually. I'm just going to say me included. In women's psyches. Yeah, and In I women's guess psyches. Because women buy into psyches. toxic masculinity. I, women yeah. love to say they're a tomboy. Why the fuck you need to be a tomboy? Because you don't, <laughs> you don't realize, but there's a denigration even in your own mind of the feminine. Yeah. So you attach to masculine because I'm not like those women. Yeah. But you are. But you're not. Both are true. But like you, we, this is where people get frustrated with me and you all the time. Because they're like, well, you said this. Yes. Now you're saying this. Yes. Why? Because both are true. I got one last one for you here. Sure. She's for the streets. She's for the streets. But, 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 but. It's a male sentiment or criticism against uh females i'm sorry for all the gender stuff guys i know we're revamping this right now uh as soon as i download the newest <gasps> software no, what you mean revamping <laughs> you know we're revamping gender talk yeah but there's no so, way around it because we've been up until this point everyone has been socialized for gender so we yeah, have to talk gender that's exactly what, I'm, what i just said that's what the generalizations are yeah that's why people hate it but it's like that's like saying black people eat watermelon. You can get mad, but a lot of black people eat watermelon. Uh, I'm not saying white people don't. I'm not saying Asian people don't, but we know black or, people do. Or all black people eat watermelon. Absolutely. Listen, yeah, I don't it, know. It goes back to what we said before. If it don't apply to you, oh, people love to be like, well, I don't eat watermelon. Kudos. <laughs> We're not talking to you then. <laughs> if the shoe don't fit. Don't wear it, nigga. I love it. Na, 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 na. Uh, yeah, so commonly men will say to women, your body count's too high, or I know too many people that you've slept with, or I can't believe you've done that sexual act, this threesome, suck that many dicks, whatever the thing is. There's a, there's a thing when men say she's for the streets, or she's a hoe, or basically she's discarded based on previous sexual activity, mm -hmm. right? To me, I see a high level of emotional oh there gosh. now of course there's even the, the micro versions of it where you will criticize maybe what your daughter might wear out mm -hmm. or who how your wife acts with the waiter mm -hmm. there's so many different levels of how men look at observe analyze and criticize female and male interaction uh they want a virgin I saw Kevin Gates or somebody, somebody was saying she was given to me. She was a virgin. They love this idea that I'm the first one to open it. The brand new car, the new car smell, <laughs> like whatever it is. And to me, it's very emotional because it shows a lack of flexibility. It shows that basically if I have to imagine that there's been a lot of other suitors, I have to start questioning my value in comparison to the others it reminds it's me of the emotional. animal kingdom yeah 
I gotta kill him. I gotta eat the cubs of the other people so that I can know I'm the main guy. It seems very reminiscent, very. But it goes to what you just said: the survival, right? Yeah. I need to survive. No one else can survive. That's animalistic. Yeah. Supposedly, supposedly, <laughs> humans have evolved. That's what makes us so different than animals. <laughs> yeah. We're so much better than animals, right? We have consciousness. We're acting with understanding, with awareness, supposedly. But what do animals do? Like you just said, you're a threat. I'm gonna kill you. We still do that as humans. You're a threat. Let me control it. Let me kill your cubs. Let me do these things to make sure that I'm the only one whose name survives. And so when your lady has three, four, seven, 33 sexual partners before you, you're so worried you won't be King Dingaling. It's King Dingaling, but it's also so many other things than King Dingaling. What are the right? other emotions it's, behind it? It is King that. Dingaling, what, but it's not just King Dingaling in the past, right? It's I might not be able to currently satisfy you. Because you may have experienced something better? You've experienced better? things that I can't do, that I haven't done, that uh, I'm not comfortable doing, that I don't want to do. So the, All the emotion is, emotion comes to the and person. And if we're being honest, man, this is how you know men are emotional. It's because of what my boys are going to say about me. Boom. That's the other part I wrote down. There's a reputation oh loss. Oh, my gosh. My boys. What are my boys going to think of me? What are they going to say? But more importantly, what if my boy didn't hit it? That, that fucks niggas up. They do it to women all the time. They talk to cousins and friends and sisters of girls they've hit. But if you do me and my brother or me and my friend or me and my boys, that automatically makes me think less of you because I feel hurt by that. They don't want to say that. Yeah. So only certain type of women do that. So the only certain a, type of niggas a, do that. There's a loss of specialness. Is that I'm what I'm not saying? special. I'm not significant. I'm not the one who taught you these things. But also, I hate to say it, to me, the way that niggas is the most bitchy is because they want all of the woman. That's the most bitchy part. Niggas' biggest flex is that my woman can't be touched by no one else. Niggas' biggest flex is I got a woman, first of all. Possession. Possession of a woman is their flex. Like they get cars, they get clothes, they get all of this stuff to impress women. So their flex is, they, this is what you men are saying. My biggest flex is a woman no one can touch. My biggest flex is not having a nigga. Right. My biggest flex is not a man that no one can touch. Women don't even believe in that because that's not even the myth. That's not even the idea yeah, of exactly. men. Men are touchable. It's more like learn to share for hmm. you guys. For men. And so for now women, here we are. So that's not even We're our adjusting flex. to that. We're now, adjusting though. to that. So now we don't value having the man anymore. Now there's other things we value, and, which means the man has to adjust. And again. men are learning you have to share, right? Her time, her affections, maybe oh, her sexual attention. That video that me and you saw with Kevin Samuels, what did that? What was he saying? I got to share you with your children. How many men have I heard don't want to share with the children? Don't want to come second to children? How many women don't want to share with the children? I don't want to come second to the children. You're talking about friends. I got to share you with your friends. That's what for the streets is. The woman's always out. How many niggas is out with their boys? Right, but you don't want your girl always out. Well, but so and so, you think it's activating? It's fear. It's not emotions that I have to deal with that I don't want to deal with. It is not just special. It's special as part of it. But any emotion, maybe I'm gonna run into a boy that slept with you. Now I gotta think and process those emotions. Is he judging me? Is, is he, he thinking less of me? Is he better than me? Is he judging me? What did he? What did you do with him? Did you do that with me? Did you like it better with him? Did you like it better with me? Those yeah, are all thoughts that yeah. I want to think about. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you still want him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he still want you? Can I trust y'all around each other? I don't want to think about that. I don't want to deal with that. No. Right? For the streets. For the streets. Uh, how many people have you been with? Your skill set. Oh, so who taught you this? How did you learn this? How did you deal with this? If you're a virgin, it's only me. It's only what I've showed you. It's only what I've taught you. It's only what we've done together. I, and I think it's like, sh he, we're, and I'm inclu including myself, we're scared to imagine the pleasure you've had elsewhere because it, the connection's so pleasurable when it feels like me and you that bringing other people even conceptually in through time and space almost dilutes that pleasure that I feel with you because of the conceptual bond I've built. And that goes to what you're saying about the special, which is something men or women both want. Look how, which is look how, how you romantic, know it's emotional. Look how oh, romantic. Oh, my God. Very Nicholas romantic. romantic. Very romantic. Because when women say that, it's ridiculous. It's laughed at. It's made fun of, which is why men don't admit it, but they want it. Yeah. They can't say it, but they want it. That's why they're bitter. That's where does all this anger, annoyance, frustration. Think about that, right? Imagine me spending 
any time thinking about what you're doing. What does that say about me? If I'm concerned, if I'm spending hours, time, energy, thought process into what you're doing, that's something that's emotionally impacting yeah, me. Absolutely. So to think about that, like what you just said, whether it's a, a Jada Pinkett, Lori Harvey, da 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 da, niggas is talking. Yeah. Spending a lot of time. Lot of you time. ain't dating Lori. You're not dating Jada. But, in the but comments. you're in there thinking and out. Why da, 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 Why women? Women these days. How did she become women these days? Yeah. And who are you referencing who and linking referencing? her back to? Absolutely. Somebody, women went on this. Who said? Who is this? Who's the women that want too much? Yeah. Who did it? To who you? did you run into that wanted too much? Yeah. Right. Because you said women want too much. Which women? What do they want? What do they want that's too much? Because you make the comparisons. Some connections how do you happen. Know? Something that Something's they've experienced. Something's inside you. Yeah. And that's how we know. And you don't think it's leaking, but we know. Because this is on your mind. This yeah. is some why are you talking about it? I don't talk about shit that didn't impact me, which lets you know if I'm talking about it, it affected me in some way, whether and it's a session, a client. I, I remember doing that to you, basically coming at you with this idea holding over your head that I'm your husband, this is the marriage. So the cl complaints I have are valid. And you're like, I'm grown and you're grown. You know what I'm saying? Like, Or we're doing the same thing. What am I doing that you're not? Because that's my thing, yes. right? Like I'm huge on, although we all have double standards, we don't have to live or act on them, right? right. So like we all have the emotional response of like, I don't like that you did that. Okay, I didn't like that you did that, but I didn't stop you because I didn't like it. Right, right, right. So what makes you feel entitled to stopping me or controlling my yeah. actions because I promise you that's not something women feel mm. I don't feel like I can just tell you what to do right but men feel like they can say hey can you write this down I don't never ask you can you write this down for me I wouldn't <laughs> dare that's a crazy sentiment in my mind to think to say that to a man but I've had men that I'm not even fucking married to ask me to write shit down for them yeah why, yeah. why did you feel comfortable asking me that because I'm a woman even when um, we've had men visit us they may ask me to do certain things. Why'd you ask me that? <laughs> Why'd you ask me that? Because yeah. I'm a woman. Whether it's cooking, whether it's grabbing you something, whether it's doing something for you, there's an idea of servitude associated and attached to womanhood. So when we don't, it's audacious. Mm. Oh, why didn't you do that? I remember even having conversations with some of our friends about the house and the house being like something about cooking. And they were like, oh, sure. What's something up? Like they asked me, well, why haven't you been cooking? And I was pissed. I said, why the fuck they asked me? <laughs> it's five motherfuckers in the house. Why does everybody turn to me about the cooking? <laughs> that is irate. Matter of fact, I saw an article on Instagram that said the man divorced his woman, Asian, because she only served him noodles. for the, I, They didn't say how much time, but it was like all she served him for breakfast, lunch, and dinner was noodles. I'm thinking, served you. You could have made your own food. Yeah, you could have had a wife. You could have ate whatever the fuck you, you wanted. Ate what you you could have had, had steak, a wife. potatoes, <laughs> fries, yeah. like whatever the hell you wanted. Yeah. You could have had, but the problem is you <laughs> thought she was supposed to make it for you. Yeah, that's you like better a be handy. glad you had noodles. That's a handicap, isn't it? Why did you eat that every day? I would never eat that every because day because I'm waiting around for someone that's to make my crazy. food for me. Can I've never known that he, life. He probably he probably walked by so many grocery stores. Fast food, place. but that's just, I I just talked to somebody else about this. Who wants to get married and eat food, fast food all the time? How are those things connected? Because it's our duty in their minds. Wow. Literally, it's so in who the wants mind. to get married? Meaning, who wants to go get a cook and then eat fast food every day? See, that sentence makes sense to me. So they, there must be a conflation. <laughs> oh, and you're getting into a lot of stuff that I talk about in therapy because there's a subtlety, right? Like that's why this awareness is important because a lot of times people are not aware of what they want. Okay. Right? People are not aware of what they're thinking, what they're feeling, right? Like what you just said, how many times did I challenge you? What are you feeling? No, 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 that's not a feeling. What are you feeling? No, 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 that's not a feeling. People aren't aware of that. And so because of that, we're already miscommunicating because I'm not even knowing who I am. I'm not aware of where I am, like my temperature, my mood, like how I'm feeling, what I'm going through, what I'm experiencing. So how can I fully communicate that? So you have a lot of men who don't realize what they want from the woman. They say men, women, men say this about women all the time. Women don't know what they want. Do you though? Mm. Do you know what you want? It goes all the way back to women for the streets. Da, 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 da. Well, what do you want in a woman? If you don't want a woman for the streets, don't look for that woman. Why, there's women that ain't for the streets. There's women that are. 
So what do you want? You're angry for a whole different reason. You want what you can't have. Mm. You want something you can't have and you're angry at that and that's okay. You can be frustrated, but who are you frustrated with? Because that's not her fault. My job is not to be available for every nigga. Anybody I know, even men that I know that care about me, they would say that. They would tell me that until it comes time to serving them. Then they want me to do that for them. Because mm. that goes what you're saying. They want to be, everybody wants to be the exception to the rule, right? Mm. Like you want the thug, but the thug that loves you, mm. yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. soft with you, or right? Lady you in want the streets, the, but a freak absolutely. in the back. Absolutely. You want the freak, but only yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. You exactly. want the video vixen, but not showing everybody, just me. I think that's, I think you just gave me a wonderful kind of encapsulation, closer, capstone. Basically, the emotions come up and exist in both sexes, both genders, all people. When sacrifice is required emotionally, when something I have to lose. And then the question becomes, will I look across at whoever I'm interacting with and see oftentimes this is their feeling when I'm receiving from them? Yes. This is the it's hard to do it because it feels pleasurable so you don't feel sacrifice yes. or it feels like sacrifice so you don't see pleasure yes. but they're happening they're happening at the same time when you can just know hey I can know truths I might not feel it's a great step that That's was the one I, that was the one that I, I had to do yeah. I can know truths that I won't feel Yes. So when I'm feeling like, oh, she's taking such good care of me this week. Damn, she's been working hard. Yeah. I haven't felt that. I haven't seen it maybe. Yeah. Or I've been grinding like a motherfucker this week. Oh, realize she may not see that. She's just feeling your efforts and pleasure. So, Absolutely. That's what EQ is about. Yeah, that's yeah. the hard part, right? Because that's the part of putting myself in a person's shoes. Yeah. And in order to do that, like you said, it can be challenging because I don't know for yeah. sure what you're experiencing. Yeah. I have to imagine <laughs> what it's like to be imagine. you, right? And there's that's certain things word. I should pull from. Yeah. Evidence. Yeah. History. Yeah. Past experiences. Past things to come. But in order to know. even take that step back and begin that process, you got to have enough... Space, space and, and desire freedom desire feeling desire, awareness that's the knowledge key. like what you said space. why do i want to experience discomfort and so that's the part that i try to challenge the men in right because like you just said when you're not comfortable they may be more comfortable and that frustrates you right but you haven't stopped stepped back and acknowledged there's a lot of times they're not comfortable because you are yeah it's going both Absolutely. ways even it's when you can't feel it Especially if you can't feel it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? That means that's the comfort they're taking. Yeah. <laughs> that's something I experience a lot with people as yeah. a therapist, right? Because I'm doing a lot of thinking and processing, and there's a lot I bring into my conversation. Yeah. So I'm thinking of, like, I was talking to someone the other day. She's like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. Yes, that's what we're literally trained to do. Think about nonverbals, think about verbals, think about past conversations, your own personal biases, like all of these variables and factors that are impacting this current conversation. Yeah temperature mood like literally like temperature and mood but also emotional temperature and mood if you've been just coming off of work you may have less energy to have certain conversations or for me to ask you too many questions right if you just rested you might have a little bit more you just ate right like there's all these factors it's not guaranteed but it's data that lets me know this may be more or less challenging right this could be easier this could be difficult this could be uh frustrating this could be a challenge a trigger whatever that's not always the case on the flip side. So that's a lot of energy I'm exerting or putting into that conversation. Yeah. Right? That you may not put any of that energy into that conversation. So you're experiencing a very comfortable conversation. Yeah. But I'm experiencing a lot of work. <laughs> that's exhausting. Doesn't yeah. mean I don't want to do it, but that's work still. Yeah. Which means that takes energy, that takes time. So then people are like, like sometimes I'll tell you, I tell people I can't talk about this no more. Now they're upset. I've already depleted my resources i've pushed beyond if we continue it won't be nice anymore <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this has been men are bitches so man if you're listening pussy up <laughs> <laughs> he took the glasses off of that. <laughs>